This time on Quest for the Open, I get overconfident. Am I going to win the Open? I offer some culinary advice. Not too much para. And get brought swiftly down to earth. What an awful golf shot. This is Hesketh Golf Club and it is the site of qualifying for the greatest tournament in the world. That is right, Quest for the Open is back. First shot, Quest for the Open, 2024. It's a pretty standard push cut. Get over that. Yeah, it's fine over there. You know what it is over there? Just a great angling to the pin. It's all about course management this year. Okay, let's go. So before we carry on this round, I think the best thing to do is fully explain what the quest for the Open is and how I am planning to try and get through qualifying. The Open Championship, in my opinion, is the greatest event in the world. History, tradition, incredible fans and unforgettable moments played out over the finest Lynx courses in the world. And as the name suggests, it's the Open. So any old joker can enter. The quest is simple. Document my progress in competitions, practice and play leading up till open qualifying in June. I document everything along that journey, the highs, the lows, but most importantly, what I learn along the way, which can help you with your own game. Regional qualifying is a one round affair at a local venue. Final qualifying takes place over two rounds, about two weeks later. In theory, you're only three good rounds away from a major. This year at my favorite open course, Roll True. We've got down to film 10 episodes this year, which document the whole process. But the most important part, really, was just making the decision to do it. Almost two years ago, I made a decision. No more pro golf. Honestly, it was just hurting too much. I played an event at Hurlston Hall and had an absolute nightmare. My confidence was literally at rock bottom. So I quit, I packed it all in because, well, it was too hard. And we're at this stage now where somehow, over the last 10 years, I managed to pull together this channel, a coaching channel, podcast channel, and then all the social media accounts. Now it's the best job in the world, in my opinion, but to do all of this, it does take time. And if I actually wanted to play and compete in these tournaments to an acceptable level, that takes practice and I just didn't have the time. Fortunately, I've now managed to assemble a crack team of golf sociopaths to help create the magic of the videos that you watch on the channel. Now, in theory, this should give me a little bit more time to actually dedicate towards not being such a trash pro golfer. But what I found is the biggest issue with my golf is here and in here. Filming myself in pro events is, to be honest, a little bit uh, terrifying because it feels like if performances are bad, it's putting myself within the public firing line. Now, I know most of you watching this are beautiful, supportive human beings, but we all know that golf can like make the strongest person curl up on the kitchen floor crying under a strip light that's kind of like blinking on and off and kind of leave you questioning yeah you know, what the hell are you doing with your life but this year to be honest i just don't give a shit. so i understand that like me qualifying for the open is almost impossible it's a shot at the moon with a homemade rocket. But to be honest, like, who cares? Like, I think you only ever truly lose when you let the opinion of others stop you doing what you really want to do. And the whole point is it's hard. You know, if you come out of the other side of it, having been better, having learned something, that's surely worth the endeavor. So that is uh, the decision made. The first thing on the polygraph to be ticked off. Um, we are out here at Reddish Felt Golf Club today. Uh, we're going to be filming the Build My Bag 2024, and that's not quite worked out, as you can tell. Probably the, a lot of the Quest for the Open stuff this year is going to be a little bit more behind the scenes. If that's kind of what you like to see, get down to those comments and let us know. It doesn't always have to be like a set piece event. Anyway, let's get back to Hesketh and let's try and set 
a target score. I'm going to be coming back to Esca throughout the year and continually trying to better my performances. So today's all about setting that initial goal. Also, open qualifying was here. So let's throw up some scores that actually got through and also two of the holes are closed for maintenance. So I'm going to make it hard on myself. I'm going to give myself a bogey on both those holes. So before we even start the round, I'm already two over. I should also explain this. It's probably going to be one of the last rounds I'm using, my Itabori irons. So I'm going through a build my bag series again this year, switching out all my clubs. And the Itaboris, <laughs> I love them, they're beautiful, but I need something with a bit more forgiveness. Wow. Especially on a cold morning like this, if I thin one today, you actually may hear me scream. Stayed right. Oh, I don't think it's got there. Ah, you know what? I did forget something. It's minus two degrees. It's not going to go very far, is it? Also, not introduced uh, Sam, a new member of the team. Started early this year. Yes, he is that tall. Absolutely ridiculous. I really hope that I can stay this relaxed during all of open qualifying this year. Oh, maybe it's just a hypothermia. First putt of 2024 is actually not horrendous. Thank you, thank you, I'll, uh, I'll take that. So as I mentioned, I'm already two over, I've got ground to be making up. I wanna try and beat Carter. <laughs> it's gonna to be tough this morning, but as I mentioned, it is just a a day to get a benchmark score going. Oh, solid par. A solid ice par <laughs> to begin with. Oh, 144 yards, I'm gonna try and chip in an eight iron. This course actually has some special memories for me. I want a junior open here, and I always seem to put well here. Hopefully I've not just cursed myself, but I always seem to put well here. Wind off the left, so I'm just going to aim in between the edge of the green and the pin. Swing this year, just trying to hit it a bit straighter. Not as much as a fade. And just try and take it to Tempo Town. Yeah, it's all right, just on the right edge. Hey, listen, for a, for a semi-shank, I'll take it. As far as shanks go, that might be the best shank I've ever hit. Why am I so out of breath? I don't know. <laughs> I'm laboured. My breathing is laboured today. Right, the wind off the North Sea starting to pick up. Is it the North Sea here? It's just a channel. The Irish Sea, isn't it? Is it the Irish Sea? Or is the Irish Sea based at the North Sea? A little chip and run for a birdie. Wow. Very confident thing to say for somebody who can't chip. A little bump. We'll have none of that talk this year, by the way. <laughs> Someone who can't shit. <laughs> Come on. Positive. <sighs> you know, the thing is, I knew that wasn't going in. So why the... Level par through two holes on a cold morning, it's not too bad, but I'm too over. I need to try and get it back. Right, so two holes in, we've already stopped for a coffee. Uh, this is Peter, he's the course manager here at Hesketh, kindly looking after us today. And as mentioned, I want to try and get up here quite a few times this year, so I'm ready for open qualifying, but also it's just a great place to come film. Third hole, we're playing off mostly the yellow tee markers today. So the whites on this hole, another 30 yards back, but I think with the, uh, with the temperature, it probably hits <laughs> itself out as we go throughout the year. Everyone just saw how straight that went, right? That wasn't just me. That was like a frozen rope. 
am I going to win the Open? So the third, this is one on the winter greens this morning. Actually looks very nicely mowed. 100 yards. Maybe this is the key for Question Open, just like staying relaxed and just enjoying it. It's got a 50 degree, nice smooth swing. A bit of a weird ball for. Yeah, it's fine, about a pin eye, a bit of a strange ball fly on that. I feel way too positive. I think that Starbucks we had this morning must have been uh, <laughs> potent. Right, birdie putt. This is a very, very good temporary green, by the way. This is like a proper green. Do it. Oh. Wow. Birdie putt that got past the hole. This is most unlike me so far. That's three pars in a row, so still two over par with the metric that I set myself. This is going well. Too well. 130 yards, slightly back into the wind. I think a nine iron. Well, unless that takes the biggest kick in the world. We've encountered our first issue of the year. Um, this bunker is in the shade. The sun hasn't hit the bottom yet. And it's, I'm gonna ground my club for a second. The frozen, I've got frozen sand. <laughs> if I was here, this would be more of an issue, but I've actually got a little bit more softness underneath the ball and I've just got to literally plop it out. Okay. So I'm gonna open up the face, not as much as I normally would do. And I'm just gonna like literally chuck it underneath the ball just try and half semi dig it. Oh. Just imagine. All right, right to left for a par. Try and stay at two. Is that not the best supper now you've ever seen in your life? Part of the quest this year, uh, as you've seen from my goals, is just to have much better course management. 370 yards, I'm just gonna hit a four iron, leave myself longer in, but stay away from the water, stay away from the danger, like not put myself in any particular bad positions. I can recover from bogeys. I cannot recover from like double and triples. So right, that white, Signpost in the middle of the fairway, straight at that. And even if it goes left, shouldn't have enough club to get to the water. Oh my God, hit the sign. Please hit the sign. Ah. Not bad though, not bad. So 170, so bang on 200 with the tee shot. 170, six iron. Wind feels like it's kind of slightly down and off the right. A bit tuggy. Yeah, I think there's a couple of bunkers up there, but should be okay. I can get up and down from anywhere nowadays anyway. So I managed to hit through this green. I think I maybe bounced off the back of it, but I'm on one of the tees on the next hole. Now, compared to this bu the bunker on the last hole, this is, I think I might just go and hole it, you know. It's frozen. Who's ready for another miracle up and down? Hands up, I am. Across the green, just on the right edge. Oh. Okay. No, not that much. Bit of a push. Rolling quite nice actually, considering. Well, 
just a bit of a, a rubbish bogey, but par five next, three over. <sighs> So with the build my bag this year, obviously um, I'm going through the bag and I'm replacing all my clubs. I don't know if I want to get rid of this. I don't know, what do you think? Comment below, what do you think? Right, this hole is quite similar to the last. Got water down the right, but it cuts in more. And we've got out of bounds left again. It's almost less risk with a longer second shot. So I'm almost tempted just to plop a little hybrid down there. A little push, but should be fine. Is that a plug? The kick right. Travel. So I know what you're all going to ask. Uh, quiet, please. Uh, chopper on the tee. You're going to ask what makes this year any different, and I have the answer. So this is the qualograph for the 2024 Quest for the Open. It's made up of the main goals, which is regional qualifying, final qualifying, but also goes all the way back to more tertiary goals, such as setting a target score at Hesketh. Some of these goals are one-time achievements, whilst others will take all year to complete. But they are all linked, and hopefully they're going to move me forward in sequence towards reaching that goal of qualifying. And also, they're going to help me to learn new things about golf, and of course, pass that information on to you guys. At the heart of everything, that is what the Quest for the Open is really about. On this qualigraph as well, we have a few different brackets. Now these are based around playing in professional competitions, around practice, but also around general health and well-being. It's going to be an absolutely epic six months. Anyway, we should probably get back to the golf. As you will see, my mental game pre-shot routine needs a bit of work. Okay, we're back 163 yards into a freshening breeze now. So I'm just going to hit a little knockdown six. Yeah, a little knockdown six. I need to start talking through my shots so much more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this right over this little post in front of me, which is in the center of the green. I'm going to try and hit this straight, but if the wind pushes it slightly to the right, that's fine. But I'm just going to commit to that start line. Solid six. I don't have to do anything stupid with it. Get that alignment. Over there, take it to Tempo Town. Be good. Oh, I just seem to feed off right that. Decent strike there. Did someone say pin high? Well, by Jove! Is that my first pin high shot of the year? What is that again? It sounded quite a ball striking. Oh, who knew? Now, I've also left myself uphill. Mm. It looks like if I hit, it's just going to move it left. 
but I've got to get the pace bang on because if I hit it too firm it's not gonna it's not gonna move to the right too much. Tricky one, fine balancing act. So left edge up the slope. Ah, it's gone. That went loads actually. Uh, I mean it's one of those tricky ones where actually that was a good put. It kind of hit exactly where I wanted it to, just the didn't read enough into it. Oh, I need to hold more birdie puts this year though. My um my par <laughs> this is kind of like the same as it was in Florida. Like my par putting in Florida was just like obscene. It was actually really good. I just need to put that onto my birdie putt. Right, onto the back seven holes um, with two of them closed so I'm technically two over par for the back nine I have to say the carrot and coriander soup from this halfway house is the nicest carrot and coriander soup I've ever had not too much carrot driver it's time to get going 327 yards a little bit downwind but it's fairly open so I'm just going to go again at the white marker in the fairway up by the green come on birdies Yeah, all right, I think. Yeah, just left semi. Again, not bad. I think that pin's kind of back, so it's okay. Coming over a bunker, but it's okay. So we've got a decent chance here. Kind of got to come over the corner of a bunker, which is an ideal downwind. Got to land it on the edge of the green, just let it release out. It's a touch shot. And obviously this early in the year, I wouldn't say my hands are at their most responsive. Let's give him an early test, though. Come on. it God. hey Pete how about you hit it harder what did I say I was going to do talk through every single shot so here we go got to chip up onto the green it runs away from me but it's back in the wind I've got a spot about six foot onto the green which I'm going to pitch on it's going to release out and then roll down to the hole hit the spot Wow, that first bounce was huge. Wow. Okay. Just left edge. This could be the worst bogey in the history of bogeys. Come on. Should have stopped. I should have stopped. <laughs> Ah, uh, as soon as the bogey police started up their sirens in the background, I should have stopped. 151 yards, I'm now four over par. That is one under what Carter set, you know, for qualifying here. Oh, we've got a couple of par fives to go and some chances, but this is 150 yards, seven iron. I'm going to aim it bang in the middle of the green at one of the trees in the background. There's like a little gap, basically over this fence post here, which is just in front. Wind's going to move it back to the left slightly. Seven iron should be enough club with the wind hurting. So bad. I cannot tell you how far I moved ahead of that ball. I practically lunged. I just... I threw myself at that ball <sighs> like a cannibal at an exposed leg. <sighs> what an awful golf shot. 60 degree, gonna land it halfway up the green, let it roll around to the left hand side, tap it in for a par, we'll move on like nothing happened. That was unexpected. What a horrendous spot to leave myself in. Right, chip it, 
Chief for pause, just gotta land it on the fringe, let it trickle out. Do it. Oh. <sighs> oh. Ah, double bogey, following a bogey. Gone from two. Well, there I go, from one over par to four over par, plus the two closed holes, six over par. Thanks for coming, Pete. Remember when you enjoyed golf about five holes ago? Not anymore. What a wonderful hole. I want to stay to the left of that fairway bunker. Wind's off the left as well, so I'm going to go straight at the flag. Tiny draw, wind should push it a little bit to the right. Perfect. No, I've broken that all team. 92 yards. 92, a little bit down-ish. 92, 92. I literally can't remember how far I know which is going. Uh, <laughs> 120, so this would be 110. So 100, so this is like a half a solid swing with a 54 degree, straight at the pin. Come on. Touch right. Distance wise, think should be okay. Blooming heck. <laughs> Long apparently. Oh, I struck that really well. <sighs> okay. Wow, that's a deep hole. Oh my god. Come on, let's get this back. We can't have. We can't have caught and beaten me. Okay, 17th and 18th hole here at Hesker, two par five. So chances to close with birdies. I'm currently six and then plus the two, eight over. So come on, two birdies to finish. Let's go. Come on, wind. Nudge it. Nudge it. Oh, he's only gone and nudged it. So they give it a bit of a back into play. That's what we want to see. So I've got a rough guess about where the green is. It's basically behind these trees. I've got 227 yards to the trees at the back, which is obviously out of bounds. So I've got about 210 to reach them. And then it goes back and left. We're into the wind. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start this on the edge of like the trees in the background behind this set, the conifers, and then just let it move slightly to the left with the wind. And then, don't know, send up a prayer to the golf gods. May they watch over me. That didn't sound good. 
I think that's probably in the edge of the trees on the other side. I, th I think that'll be okay, but I just didn't, uh, didn't catch it, kind of stood up and out of that. So I've got a little bit of a, <laughs> a tiny gap here. This is more of a kind of hit and hope, and hopefully I can like scramble it onto the right edge of the green over that bunker, but I could try and get it through uh, the 90% air tree, but I don't think that's a high percentage play. <sighs> okay, here we go. Oh, I just got that onto the green off the crossbar. Not bad, not bad. Well, I have yet to have a birdie today and it's an outside chance at that on the 17th. Come on, Pete, straight back up this green. And you're not gonna get a birdie if you leave it five foot short. I think I've read that somewhere. Just enough of the right edge. Right, come on. I want to I want to get my first birdie in 2024. We've got a par five on the last, so we have a chance, and it's a little bit more downwind, and it's an absolutely beautiful hole. It's like framed by a little valley. It's a proper lynx hole, this one. Just 40 off. See if we can get this first birdie in 2024 and set this score for the quest for the Open. I just want to say thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, please become part of this community. It'd be great to have you along for the journey as we progress through qualifying in July. Oh, that's six months, six and a bit months. Right, 18th hole, straight down. We're going to stick it left side of the fairway, let the wind bring you back, knock it onto the green, get an eagle, stuff the birdie. Not a clue. Well, I mean, it did hit a tree. It felt like a tiny bit of a pull. So if we focus our attention on the left side of the hole. <laughs> it's just nice to feel. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 not a clue, not a clue. Right, we've got 176 yards left into this par five. Please, please golf gods, smile upon me once more. Let me get under par on one hole today. I think that's, I think that deserves a like. Would you say that deserves a like on the video? At least one. At least one. If you're happy about the quest for the open being back, make sure you smash that thumbs up. Very like narrow entrance to this green, but there are banks on either side, so it can kick back in. 176. I just found the left semi. I think a six iron maybe. Okay, come on. Birdie or an eagle, nothing else. I'm gonna aim at the last chimney to the left on the house behind the green. Just like drift back, come on. Ah. Oh. That's just long and right. I think it's gone over the other side of that hump. That's down towards where the, uh, one of the T's is. I never felt quite comfortable over that, I'm not sure why. Okay, well, we're gonna have to make another Jordan speed up and down. Can you understand now why I might be switching my irons? I've, I've moved in my career past the butter knife stage. I, I don't want butter knives anymore, I want like little slices of bread. You know, like Warburton's toasty bread. Other bread brands are available, of course, but it's kind of like that. It's kind of like thick cut. It's quite soft. That's kind of what I want. At the moment, these irons are like a popper dom. You know what I mean? They're so thin. Catch it slightly, and it cr it's just done. It's just gonna crack. Not crump it. That's a bit too thick. But like a toasty bread. That's what I kind of want. And I think I've identified the irons which fit that the best. So I don't want a butter knife. I want the thing which the butter knife spreads the butter on. Oh. What is he got? All right. So lob wedge. Just gonna try and land it on the green. Think of the positives, if this goes in, it'd be a legend. <laughs> right, come on. Not bad, not bad. Right, a chance for a birdie. A big flappy seagull by the Southport coast. Are you ready to see this one, Mick? Uh, yes. All right, cue the fireworks. 
if this goes in. Come on. Straight as she goes. It's nice to see the uh, fairways, uh, fairways, greens are kind of softening up a little bit now. And they're looking really good. Okay. Thanks. Episode 2, Quest for the Open, will be coming soon. Positive signs, hit exactly where I wanted to, it just didn't bounce. Silly. At least it's warm. Does an absolutely wonderful job. I hear his name is in my <laughs> 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 And we're going to have to do this through our open qualifier. <laughs> We've got the fear roll. <laughs> Asking your playing partners at open qualifying. Oh, look at that flag. Stitching on that. You see this flag? I don't think you understand. <laughs> just, just, just wait here. No, John, John, just hold your part. I'm just going to get the drone on that. <laughs> <laughs> got even the special effects going on. Thanks for the effects, by the way. This is looking very dramatic. <laughs> Woo!